welcome back to my channel in my previous video we looked at the formation of coral reefs in this video we will be examining the importance of coral reefs in the caribbean and how they are being negatively impacted Among the benefits of coral reefs is the fact that they help to protect the coast from the impact of waves. Under ordinary circumstances, strong waves breaking along the coast can cause a lot of damage to various human structures. But coral reefs form the first line of defense, acting as a natural breakwater for waves. So as the waves encounter the coral reef, they break along the reef and lose some of their energy. This means that they will have less energy available when they reach the shore, resulting in less erosion along the coast. As such, settlements along the coast are protected and people can live at ease. Now, coral reefs also form the main source of raw materials for our beautiful white sand beaches, which are major tourist attractions in the Caribbean. The limestone reefs can be eroded into sand by wave action, but majority of the sand is produced by parrotfish, which graze on the coral reef, digesting the rock and then excreting it again as white sand. Reefs provide a home for many species of marine life, including sponges, sea urchins, shellfish, and so on. The abundance of marine creatures that inhabit coral reefs make them very important to our fishing industry. There may be a hundred times more life on or near the reefs than out in the open ocean. So coral reefs form some of the most important fishing grounds in the Caribbean. A thriving coral reef is also an asset to the tourist industry of the Caribbean. Many tourists visit tropical areas hoping to observe and enjoy the beauty of the coral reefs, especially when doing snorkeling. Now, unfortunately, coral reefs can also be damaged or even destroyed by a number of natural as well as human factors.
for example, increased flow of fresh water after heavy rains and hurricanes will reduce the salt water content of the sea and this will negatively impact the coral reefs. Furthermore, the winds brought on by hurricanes can also cause coral reefs to be torn apart. The most shallow reefs are most vulnerable to the impact of hurricanes, but they can also impact reefs at greater depth. Hurricanes generate massive waves which mixes water surface, warm surface water with the cooler salty water and this results in upwelling which will affect the deeper reefs. So after a hurricane, the sea surface becomes polluted and this blocks the sunlight from the coral. Though corals have a high level, level of resilience to these natural forces, the frequency of these events as a result of climate change have increased their impact on coral reefs. Corals may become stressed from a number of factors, including high temperatures resulting from global warming, as well as pollution, high levels of acidity, and so on. Corals react to the stress by expelling their zoanthellae, which results in coral bleaching. When the zoanthellae are expelled, the corals become colorless. The polyps also lose their main source of food. Bleaching therefore leaves corals vulnerable to diseases, stunts their growth, affects their reproduction, and can impact other species that depend on the coral community. Severe bleaching can even kill the coral. Deforestation along hill slopes will increase the level of overland flow and therefore the amount of fresh water, especially after heavy rain. When this water reaches the sea, it reduces the salt water content, which in turn impacts the coral. Additionally, mud and other sediments are washed into the sea, which smothers the coral. The overuse of fertilizers on farms can harm water quality because nutrients such as nitrogen and phosphorus from the fertilizer are washed into the waterways and eventually end up in the oceans. These nutrients can harm coral reefs. 
the increased nutrient content increases algae growth, which can smother the living coral. The fishing industry may also contribute to coral reef damage and destruction. Damage may result from anchors being thrown on the reef. Also, fishing nets may be left on top of reefs, which smother them or even block the sunlight. The harvesting of beneficial fish can also have a negative impact on the coral reef. Corals can also become exposed to oil spills. They can come in contact with oil spills in different ways. For example, oil floating on the water surface can be deposited directly on the corals in an intertidal zone when the water level drops at low tide. Rough seas can mix the oil into the water, into the water column, where they can drift down to the coral reefs. Furthermore, heavy oil can get mixed with sand or sediment. When this happens, it becomes uh, more dense and is able to sink below the ocean surface and therefore will smother the coral. Now, since coral reefs are such valuable assets to the Caribbean, it is very important that we put systems and measures in place to reduce the rate at which these coral reefs are being damaged or destroyed. In 1994, the Boko Reef Trust was set up to address the issue of coral reef destruction in Trinidad and Tobago. The trust is involved in a variety of projects, including research and monitoring of coral reef to identify potential threats. Research has also been done for habitat restoration. Additionally, Boko Reef on the southwest side of Tobago has been designated a no-take marine protected area and represents the only marine protected area on the island. Now the north and east coast of Jamaica are known for fringing reefs, but this fringing reef system has been deteriorating. Marine park areas have been established in Montego Bay, Negril, Ocherius, and Port Royal. These marine parks help with the management of the coastal zones. There is also restriction 
for development in these areas. At the Montego Bay Marine Park, for example, educational field trips are conducted to inform students about coral reefs. Several projects have also been put in place by the National Environment and Planning Agency, NEPA, to reduce coral reef destruction. The government of Barbados set up a coastal zone management unit in 1983 with the aim of monitoring water quality and the state of offshore coral reefs. It also educates the public about coastal problems and solutions. The government of Barbados has also built a sewage system on the South Coast, which was completed in 2004. Pipes were laid beneath the roads to collect wastewater from houses and business places. A treatment plant was also created to remove all the solid waste from the safe sorry, for safe disposal on land, and a pipeline takes the liquid out to sea where it is discharged in water, which is 30 to 40 meters deep beyond the fringing reef. From that point, the waste is rapidly dispersed by marine currents and washed out into the sea. Now, what else can be done to reduce coral reef damage and destruction? Well, replanting trees, especially along slopes, as well as mangroves, can help to protect the reefs by reducing the amount of fresh water that gets to the sea. We can also reduce the rate of land and water pollution. Another thing we can do is to rehabilitate damaged coral reefs. We can continue to do research and share new information with the public. We can also facilitate supplemental or alternative livelihoods to reduce the dependency on the exploitation of reef species. Okay, so thanks again for watching and don't forget to like to share and to subscribe.